All right, y'all. We are live on this beautiful Friday morning. It is a jolly type of day. It is a jolly type of day, a beautiful sunny day. Blessings to all of you in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Messiah. I do pray that all of you are doing well, and we have some important things to talk about today. With the Bitcoin price action, I'm going to talk about the Ethereum price action as well. I'm going to talk about some of the trades I'm currently in. I'm going to talk about some of the targets I am looking at. Bitcoin is testing a very important support right now. So stay tuned, guys. We will get into it. All right, y'all. Is it too early to pull out the fib, says Aaron Raby. Eh, you can pull out the fib anytime, guys. You can pull out the fib anytime. Money for the People says, has the bull market part two started? Justin Courtney says, we need some background music. We, we do need some background music, guys. And you know what? You know what? While, while we are waiting, let me just see if I can... Um, find the actual thumbnail that I use for this video. You guys can see we got some we got some Carl from the Moon making a cameo today. Because it's a Friday, it's a chill stream these days, guys. You know, Friday is a chill stream. And uh, you know, everybody knows I'm a huge fan of Carl from the Moon. And um so here, he's making a little appearance in the thumbnail, guys. But yeah, I need to work on some background music. Somebody made me a bluegrass song for the background music, um, and I need to start incorporating that. I do. So here we are, guys. The Bitcoin price action. As you can see right here, I have this chart that I created specifically for the thumbnail of this video. Hike in a sheet candles, which you guys know I don't even really use, but it looks nicer in a thumbnail, doesn't it? You got these nice little uptrends and downtrends. So easy, so easy. Just short here and long here, guys. It's so easy. With hiking a she, right? We all know that. Okay, so on a more serious note, let's get into the Bitcoin price action, kind of talk about what has been happening, uh, you know, during the last day, really. Um, if we come over here, I want to start on the 24 minute time frame. Yesterday, as I was doing my stream, we were noticing that we were trading in this um, 
symmetrical triangle that was forming here. And I think we had not broken out of it yet, but it's just so interesting in hindsight to see how the price action respects these levels so well. When we broke out of the triangle, we came up to test the top of this uh, wedge that we've got going on here. And then we come right back and get a perfect retest off the trend line of the triangle. And then we came up here, and believe it or not, we got a perfect, perfect rejection off of the uh, 0.65 Fibonacci level. Uh, let me see if I can pull that fib for us just so we can take a look. Because I love to pull the fib. You guys know I pull it out. I'll be in the grocery store pulling out the fib. And um, people look at me weird, but you know what? You got to do what you got to do. And clearly, yes, this was the fib that I pulled. If we go back to the 24-minute time frame, it's, and I know a lot of people in my Discord took this scalp last night, rejecting perfectly off that 0.65, coming down, coming back up. We got the trade that we were waiting for, where we were waiting for us to come back and hit this point of control and reject off of it with the chickens drinking water, which we did get. See, um, I'm currently now in two Bitcoin shorts. I am short from right here, and I am short from right here. And this was a trade setup. Well, these are two trade setups that um, you know I had been looking for and waiting for. In fact. In the Discord yesterday, one of the potential trade setups that I posted was this, where we come up, and because we did not hit this 32877 last time, we come up, come a little bit above that, and then get a strong reaction down. We've currently hit take profit one on that trade. And so now I'm in two shorts. I'm still in the short um, from yesterday, where, uh, well, I guess it was two days ago now, where I was waiting basically for this um, kind of like a, a, a swing failure pattern. Around these parts we call swing failure patterns chickens drinking water. Might get into why later if you're new. But um, I was looking for that short off around here. We got that short and um, it was a really nice uh, a really nice trade. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm still currently in that trade but I've taken 50% of the profit out. And then last night uh, I had an alarm set. I woke up just enough to get into this uh, this short right here, where um, you know I've currently I've taken some profit out of that for now. It's not a bad move. And right now, currently, guys, uh, I am long. I am long on Bitcoin right now. Um, this morning in the Discord, I did post right here because we were getting a hidden bearish. Uh, hidden bullish divergence on the 45 minute and hour time frame. I entered a small long position. My stop loss was below the weekly level. Uh, last time I checked, that trade was currently, and I have not taken profit out of this yet, guys. That trade was up 5.31%. Obviously, I am using some leverage here. Still using good risk management. Please don't misunderstand me, guys. I am not risking more uh, than I should be here. Um, but let's see. Now, now, that trade is currently up. 10% and my first take profit is uh, just got hit. My first take profit just got hit, guys, at 32500 That was my target uh, as I posted in the uh, Discord right here. Um, I have a sell limit order at 32.5. So those are the trades I'm doing right now, guys. This is, this is where I'm currently at right now. Um, so let's talk about some possibilities of where, you know, actually, yeah, this is cool. Uh, let me let me just adjust this a little bit here. I'm going to take a little more profit out right here, guys. Yeah, cool. We just took out some some profits there. Um, yeah. So let, let's let's talk about what could potentially happen here because Bitcoin is at a very important support, as I had mentioned. In the, in the cool thumbnail of this video, guys, in the cool hike in a sheet thumbnail of this video, I did mention that Bitcoin is testing a very important support level. So what is that support? It is this level right here, about 32.2. We have a double area of support right here. We have a weekly level and we have the value area low of the range, the big range that we've been trading in since May 19th when Bitcoin came below $42,000. Got the black coffee going on, guys. 
and uh, started trading within this range. And we were really, you know, once we once we came down below this weekly level right here, that was kind of a very bearish sign. It was a bearish sign because when you when you lose a range here, let me clean up the chart and let me let me just go to another chart here so that people can see more of what I'm talking about. So let's go to the daily time frame and um, let's mark out some important levels here. So we had uh, 42, give or take, right around here. And if we pull out a fixed range tool and just kind of analyze the volume that we traded all throughout this area, right, we can see that um, we have right here, this, this is the point of control currently acting as our resistance. And then down here, we have the, the current value area low, which used to be a bit higher. So I still have, and it's a weekly level, so I still have it marked out here. But basically what this is showing us is it's showing us a volume-based range where according to the volume that was traded, the price that Bitcoin was most traded at, the fair value for Bitcoin currently is between about, you know, 37.4 and about, you know, 32.2. And as long as we're trading within this range, we can expect that we will still continue to trade in this range. But if we lose that value area low, then Bitcoin could start to form a new range and see lower prices. So losing this level was a very bearish thing. Now that we're back above that 32.2 level, it's... Um, it means that very well we could come back into these higher prices. We could come back into some of those higher prices. If we lose this level, again, this 32.2 level in here. Let me let me just turn off here. Um, what What is going on right now? There we go. There we go. I, that was kind of sloppy. If we lose this support here, guys, I am expecting us to, to come down to lower levels. Now, right now, the most important resistance we have above us is this right here, this like 32877. It's a very important resistance. If we can manage to come up above here, then I do think we're going to see higher levels. And I have the, the, the resistances that I am currently looking for. Um marked out on the chart one of those areas is right around here right around 33.8 uh, that that would be in my mind the next uh, major resistance above us and um, yeah if we take a look at the daily time frame and we zoom out we can see that there still is and let me let me shut off all these lines guys let me shut off all these dang lines here because I don't want to I don't want to be overwhelming with this with this chart um, Boom, turn them all off. The daily, uh, yeah, the daily time frame, we have still printing, well, that has printed, you know, the bullish divergence on the daily time frame, where price has made a lower low, momentum has made a higher low. And there's still some room here, guys, I think, for upward movement. I do think there's still some room here. Because... You know, what's happening right now on the four hour time frame is we're printing a red dot. We, it printed a while ago. And obviously, we need to consolidate here or, or come down, right? We either need to consolidate or come down. But look at the money flow on the four hour. The money flow on the four hour looks like if we play a little game of red dot, green dot, you know, and we get a green dot down here, that could really make the money flow curve over the zero line on Market Cipher B on the four hour. And if we just go back in time and take a look at the effect money flow crossing has on the four hour time frame, we can see right here, right, we had something similar where we printed a red dot on market cipher B pretty much at the same level we're currently at right now. We printed a red dot right here. We came down, we, came, we didn't really even come down, we just consolidated a little bit and then we got another pump to the upside as the money flow crossed over that zero line. That was really the the catalyst, it wasn't the catalyst, guys, because we know Market Cipher B is not causing price action. It's simply giving us a visual of what's happening, right? So uh, sometimes I might talk like Market Cipher B is causing 
price to move. But you know, when we see the money coming into the asset, before we even print that second green dot, we start getting a pump to the upside. And so it's very possible that right here we could get something similar. It's very possible we could get something similar, which would you know allow us then to to break out of not only this falling wedge, but it would allow us to finally get above that resistance that we're currently at, which um, boom right here, which has given us two juicy shorts, um, you know in the in the past and. Obviously, we do have some, some fib confluence here as well. We have a golden pocket right here. We have the point of control right there. And it's um, it's currently our resistance. So really for me right now, if I had to uh, put on another level here, you know, as long as we can hold above this uh, this weekly level here, then... Um, then I do think that uh, we, we can come back up higher. But if we lose this, then I'll be looking down to some lower supports uh, to potentially catch a, a bounce and, and long from there. And everybody knows how much I love to pull out the fib. And I do love to pull out the fib. It's one of my favorite things to do. In fact, um, I will be out on the tractor and I will pull out the fib. I'll be in the chicken coop pulling out the fib. I will be staking my amaranth plants that got knocked over in the heavy rain last night, and I will pull out the fib. Why do I always love to pull out the fib? Because the fib tends to help us enter trades, right? If, if we are pulling out our fib, if we are marking levels of support and resistance, we can get into those juicy trade entries. In fact, you know, the two shorts that I took most recently were off fib levels. And if this is something you guys want to learn and you don't know how to do technical analysis, you don't know how to mark your levels of support and resistance or use volume or use trend lines or use moving averages or Fibonacci, check out jasoncaspertrading.com because this course will equip you with the knowledge and the skills you need to become a confident trader where, and this has changed the way many people trade, guys. But the goal of this course is to equip you with everything you need, not only to do your technical analysis, find those good trade setups, have a strategy that is tested, that works, but also to teach you how to use risk management, how to have the right mindset so that even if you're not the best trader, you could still lose three out of four trades and still be profitable overall. And honestly, that is probably the most important part of trading. I do say in the beginning of this course, the easy part is learning how to trade. The hard part is having the mental discipline to stick to your strategy and risk management plan, guys. That is really the most important thing when it comes to trading in my mind. Uh, let me pop into the chat real quick here. What's going on, everybody? We've got 346 people in here and only 80 likes. Hey, Let's try and get this video up to 750 likes. Uh, two days ago, I did a 0.025 Bitcoin giveaway because we got 500 likes, and now I'm up in the ante to 750. Let's see if let's see if we can do that. Um, thank you guys for being here, and also, yeah, if we can get the amount of likes to 500, no, that that's. That's too high. If we can get the likes up to 300, I will do a juicy discount on the course. I will really bring the juice. Um, so Michael asks, have I ever studied nature's Fibonacci numbers for plants and gardening? Yes, I have, and it's very, very interesting. Uh, J-Boy Bullish says, um, go from trying to trading. Go from trying to trading with Jason Casper trading. Oh! That's a nice slogan. Go from trying to trading with Jason Casper trading. Um, hmm. Free your consciousness says, finally, I sound like me and not crypto face. People always say I sound like crypto face. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, you know what I think it is? I have to be honest with you guys. Here's the thing. I have to be totally honest with you guys. I have never tried to be like crypto face but i've always liked crypto face the reason why i like crypto face is because i feel like when i hear him speak and talk he remind he like he has he has a lot of tendencies that i already have that's one of the reasons why i really was drawn to him right 
So I think we just are similar in some ways. Not in a lot of ways, but in some ways. So I don't ever try to sound like him. I just, that's how I am, guys. That's how I am. Uh, yeah, it's just how I talk. That's how I talk. That's how I've always talked, you know, for a long time, y'all. I mean, that's just how I, that's how I am. Okay. Thanks for uh, Allah al Ram Ahi for being here. Uh, Obi Wan Bitcoin Obi, what's going on, bro? Dominique de Graff, yeah, Dominique de Graff was the one who won the point uh, zero two five BTC, uh, yeah, which is which is worth a little bit more now, right, than it was at the time. Worth a little bit more now than it was at the time. So, yeah, let's talk about some some possibilities here. You know, obviously we're we're coming down, guys, or at least consolidating here. We've got the four hour red dot. That has confirmed, and we're currently an hour, about an hour through this uh, four-hour candle here. So let me uh, erase some fibs here. You know, sometimes you got to put the fib away, right? It's not always appropriate to be out. But let's say that this really was a top here, and we're not just going to get a little retracement before we continue up. Because obviously we could come down, and from here we could just come back up, or... We could come down even more, right? I know this is groundbreaking. We could either go up or we could go down. Uh, shout out to my good friend Carl from the Moon, right? So he actually taught me that, right? Carl from the Moon taught me we could either go up or come down. Mm. I love me some black coffee, organic black coffee. Organic. You don't want to be drinking all those pesticides, guys, especially you men out there. You know what that stuff does to your sperm count? You know, and your testosterone levels not good, guys. Us, us modern day men, we really need to be diligent about our testosterone levels. Our grandparents had much higher testosterone than us. It's because of all the pesticides and the chemicals and the plastics and the phytoestrogens and all the crap we have in our environment. Anyway, before I wax political or not political, philosophical, let's pull out a fib. Let's assume this is the high. All right, so we'll take our fib from the swing low to the swing high. And it gives us some areas of interest, right? Just gives us some areas of interest. Let me pop off that fib for a second and pop off that one. Um, gives us some areas of interest. So, you know, if we're going to retrace, if this was the bottom and we're going to continue back up to higher levels, then... Assuming that's true, right? Assuming this is the beginning of the uptrend and we're currently experiencing a retracement, then some of the areas I would look to retrace to are A, the 382, or B, the golden pocket. Now, the golden pocket does give us some confluence with this lower trend line of the wedge, which we may or may not still be trading in, right? Like what even happened here? I don't know, right? I don't know. If we were looking at this... Uh, just objectively, you know, we had the fake out, we come back up, you know, two little wick outs, and then we're coming back down, and we've got the spiral and all this. So, you know, but if we are going to retrace, these are some areas I would look to retrace. So it is very possible that we could come down even all the way down to this area here, and then finally come back up uh, to hit higher levels. Because, um, or we could, we could just do it from right here, right? We could do it from right here depending on how things go right now. You know, this morning, the reason why I even entered a long trade in the first place is because we had a hidden bullish divergence coming in right here. Even though money flow is coming down, momentum is coming down, putting in a lower low, and price is putting in now a higher low. And if anybody doesn't understand divergences, they're very important. And uh, somebody in the Discord, oh man, uh, Crypto Traveler, Crypto Traveler, shout out to Crypto Traveler in the Discord, is uh, showing here, you know, the difference between a regular divergence and a hidden divergence. A hidden divergence is where the price is making a higher low and momentum is making a lower low. And you have to think about it as like throwing rocks off the roof of your house onto a trampoline. That's how I think about hidden divergences. Right, because if we got price doing this, making a higher high, and momentum uh, doing this, 
making a, a I'm sorry, price is, is making a higher low and momentum is making a lower low. You have to think of it as, you know, we're throwing a rock off the roof of the house. This is the roof of the house. And we're throwing the rock down to here. All the way down here, we got this nice trampoline to give us a nice kaboing back up to an even higher level. Now, I find a lot of times hidden divergences don't play out as smoothly as regular divergences. They can oftentimes be a harbinger of what is to come. So I find that I don't, I cannot trade hidden divergences as accurately as I can trade normal divergences, which usually lead to an immediate and drastic move. But they still do, um, you know, they still provide value. Absolutely, they still provide value. And that's what got me into that long, which is currently in profit. So cool. I think that it's a very critical time for for Bitcoin because if if we if we lose this level and we lose this level the six one eight then I think we are going to come down and see much lower levels in the twenties in the twenties and I have all the levels marked out in uh, the Discord and by the way people always ask how to get into the Discord the way you do that is uh, Patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper let me drop that down in here. And also, uh, Market Cipher, guys. If you want a 10% discount on Market Cipher, we got this right here. Boom, 10% coupon code. And if anybody wants to create another Bybit account and you would like to use my affiliate link, this is it. You can get the same old stuff from that you get from every other YouTuber, guys. $1,600 if you deposit a million dollars or something crazy like that. Plus 15% interest just by holding money in your account. Personally, I have four Bybit accounts. And the reason I have four Bybit accounts is so that I can trade. Um, I can long and short and be in multiple longs and multiple shorts at the same time. Like Right now, I'm in two shorts and a long. But sometimes I'll be in like three shorts and two longs. And I'm trading different pairs too. Like, you know, with the inverse perpetual, you cannot really... You cannot really uh, trip, have a long and a short going at the same time. With USDT, you can. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyway. Anyway, enough of that. Let me let me pop back into the chat here. Um, fact check, the fact checker says, win moon. Well, we don't know. I don't know win moon. I'm not much of a predictor, guys. I am not much of a predictor. Really what I do is I look at a chart and I, I say it could do this, it could do that. If it does this, this will be my plan. If it does that, this will be my plan. And one of the most important things I think about trading is coming up with a plan uh, in advance. That's why you know I do things like this where I post my plans in here and my potential, the, the trade setups that I'm looking for. Like, you know, if this or that happens, this is what I will do. That way, when it happens, I already kind of know. And it helps me stay disciplined too because, you know, it it would have been very easy for me and it was actually still very tempting for me because I was waiting for the short all day. I was waiting for the short all day. And last night, I was in the basement, I was chatting with some people in the Discord, you know, White Phoenix and a whole bunch of people one day closer, and a uh, whole bunch of people in the Discord. And when we rejected off this um, 32, th this 6.65 level, I was very tempted to just get into my short there, uh, and then go to sleep. But I didn't do it, I, I waited out, I waited it out until my plan came to pass up here and that's the short that I took and I'm glad that that's the short that I took because if I had taken this short it still would have been a great short it was a good short for everybody who took it and I know a lot of people DCA in here they shorted here and then they probably shorted up here which is fine but you know I, I wasn't going to do that because I was already short from over here so I was still holding that short <laughs> you know and I had my um I, I moved I moved my stop loss up a little bit for that short, so I still am in it. I'm still in that short, and uh, so I kind of did. You could say DCA in here as well, but a cur one of the shorts is um, like right here. This this short here, you could see I'm trading the USDT pair, 
but uh, this short right here, you can see that I am trading the, uh, wait a second, am I trading the USDT pair for both of them? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing it from two different accounts. That's strange, guys. Am I going crazy? I thought I was trading one of them to stack my Bitcoin, but I guess not. I guess not. Okay. Well, let me pop into the chat on that note, since I don't even know what my own trades are. Okay, so Ramiro Alvarez Rihalihan says, do you see a bearish div on the one hour? Let's check out the one hour, guys, and see if we see a bearish div. Well, yes, of course, there's the bearish div on the one hour right here. Um, this this is a quite obvious one. Um, and I would say, you know, potentially that has played out, or we're going to come down even more, right? It's either played out or we will come down more. It's kind of hard to say. When we see divergences, it's hard to know if they've played out or not um, fully, right? We could say, you know, that we had a bearish divergence right here as well. And this one, it played out, right? But then we got a bounce. So is this going to now bounce us? Like, that's the thing. I don't know. We even had a bearish divergence right here. This one, you know, we came down, but then we came back up. So it's like, when we're trading divergences, that's why it's so important to have take profit levels along the way uh, so that we have a plan so that we don't take a winning trade and turn it into a losing trade. That's that's one of the things that I talk a lot about, locking in profits and stuff like that. You know, what I would say, even though these bearish divergences are here on the one hour, and even though we just did print a, a red dot in the 12 minute, I just got the alert for that. Money flow is coming down on the 12 minute a little bit. If we do look at the one hour, we do have the hidden the hidden bullish divergences on the one hour coming in, right? Momentum's coming down. Price is consistently coming up. That is a hidden bullish divergence. So, you know, things are a little a little bit a little bit of a mixed bag here, which is why you have to have your levels of support and resistance marked out so that you know, if you say, "Okay, it's unclear here. Are we going to lose this support or are we going to are we going to keep uh, holding this support. You know, is this bearish divergence finished playing out or not? Well, we don't know. That's why, you know, we're pulling the fib and we're saying, well, if we come down more, where are some areas we can look for this bearish divergence to finish playing out? Well, one of the areas is right around here. One of the areas is right around here. But we don't know for sure. That's why, you know, my my first take profit level for this short was the the line that we just got a little bounce off right now. Right, my take profit one was this uh, 32285 level because it's a support. So if you're shorting, you should always be taking profit at support because support are areas where we might get a bounce and continue back up. And if we fall through, then you set your ne next take profits at lower supports. And when you're taking profits at these supports, you're also looking for potential longs. And it doesn't mean you have to even close your short in general because, you know, I'm short from here and I am long from down here. But both of those trades are still open. I've already, you know, I've taken a little profit out now of this long up here. And so now if that long gets stopped out, move the stop loss to my entry, which I've done, then, you know, now my long is in profit and my short is still in profit. And you can just trade this thing up and down from from different accounts, it could be a pretty nice ride. If you if you ever get yourself in a position where you're short from high and long from low, then you can really relax. Uh, I mean, it works better. It works a lot better if you are, um, <laughs> you know, long from down here and let's say short from up here, right? That's that's a much better position to be in. Unfortunately, you guys know I, I missed the long opportunity big time, and so I've been really just shorting and longing. This little area here, right? That's th these have been the trades that I have have been taking because I missed this awesome move. But it's all good, guys. It's all good. You can't get them all. You can't catch them all, y'all. Uh, so Adrian M loves him some Bitcoin with some salt. Yep, yep. Crypto crank says sounds like a break even. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Right now, if I get stopped out, absolutely a break even. Probably or or a small little a small little win because I, I took out you know half the half the trade but here's the thing that's okay because what it's done is it's hedged me 
it's hedged me from um, losing anything now, which is good. I'm still in the short, which is locked in big time. And the, you know, the, the small, insignificant uh, long I just took, you know, there's two possibilities now. Either I will end the trade with close to the same amount of money that I started the trade with, which is great. Or if we do keep coming up from here, then I, I have the potential to make a lot of money. So my risk right now is zero for that long. And that's that's why I, I do that. Um, so Bruce Dupu, du, Dupuis wants to know, um, how much percent do I put in my first take profits? Well, lately, guys, I've been taking a lot out. Lately, I've been taking a lot of profit out of these trades here because, let's be real, the markets have been a little bit indecisive and, you know, especially with the longs, right? Because I longed this yesterday down here, and I, I took some profit out. I took profit out when we got to the weekly. I took profit out when we got to here. I took profit out when we got to here. And each time, the first one, I took like 35%, second one like 25 and then I closed the long up here. I just totally closed it um, because I was – I thought we were coming down, and, 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 we, and we did a little bit. So it, it depends on the trade, but sometimes I'll take 50% out. Like the long right here, I did – I limited out 50%. I limited into this, limited out of this. It's it, it's not a bad deal. If you can if you can limit in and out of trades, you, you can make those small moves and still make them profitable. You don't have to mark it in. Crypto crank, why not front load your trades now so you can catch a whopper, a whooper? Liquidation is so far away if you load shorts up to 35k. I just, I just, that's not my style. That's not my style. I don't like KuCoin, Marv. I, I do have a KuCoin account. I just don't like the interface. It's very hard to use for me. It's a good alternative to Binance for those of us who may or may not live in America. But um, Crypto Yacht says limits hate me. Yeah, they, they hate me too, but sometimes you can get in, especially when the price is moving very slow. Do I use Market Cypher SR as pivot highs and pivot lows? I use Market Cypher SR mostly for the VWAP, right? So I got Market Cypher SR on right here. And um, look at that, right? We come right up to the VWAP and reject. Right up to the VWAP and reject, which honestly, guys, is a sign that uh, t today may be you know, kind of a bearish day, right? We start the day at 1 a.m., we lose the VWAP, come back for the retest, rejection. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens here. The VWAP is my favorite. I would rather use my hand-drawn levels of support and resistance than the market cipher uh, SR levels. That's just me, guys. The pivot highs, um, at the pivot lows, I don't know, like... I, I just I've never I've never found it too helpful to be honest with you guys, because this pivot high doesn't doesn't come in here until we hit that level, right? In hindsight, it looks perfect, but that level was not up there until we hit that level. You know, this this last pivot high was still there, which is is helpful if you're looking in the past. But I'd rather just draw the levels on my own. That's that's how I'm most comfortable doing it. Uh, I've tried to use uh, like the resistance and the support levels. But um, I also, I've just had a hard time using it. But the VWAP is what I like uh, to use. I like to use the VWAP and Market Cipher B primarily. And sometimes I'll sprinkle in a little Market Cipher A, guys. You know, those yellow X's ain't no joke. The yellow X's and the Blood Diamonds ain't no joke. Okay, I, I have entered shorts simply because of the yellow X's on high time frames and the Blood Diamonds on high time frames. And they are no joke, y'all. They ain't no joke. Just like the fib ain't no joke. Shout out to Crypto Pumpet who just got home from work um, from the Lon London Stock Exchange. Um, how's that Bitcoin getting on? Yeah, it's, it's getting on pretty well, Crypto Pumpet. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm actually long, bro. So if you um, want to pump the price, bro, you know, put put on a couple, couple, couple thousand Bitcoin. Shaman 8, thoughts on what might happen if we break the point of control? I think we're coming up. I think if, if we can come above this level right here 
and flip this a very strong resistance into a support, then I think we are absolutely going to come up to higher levels. And, you know, I've got them all marked out. And ideally, as we're coming up to those levels, if we want to enter into the juiciest shorts, okay, I want to look at a picture of juicy watermelon. You guys know what it's like? To eat watermelon on a hot day when it's hot outside and you've been out all day working, working the land, and you come inside and your wife has just cut open a fresh watermelon that you grew in your own watermelon patch, okay? You grew it in your own chicken manure that you put in the compost pile and it composted over winter and now it's turning into this juicy watermelon and it's cold. It's cold watermelon. It's been in the fridge, right? You take that first bite, and you're thirsty, and you're hot. You take that first bite. Mm, so thirst-quenching and good, right? If we want to enter into a short like that, then we need to make sure that we are seeing bearish divergences on the higher time frames for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, yeah. But it would be really nice if we saw like, you know, one hour bearish divergences where we get our nice, uh, we come up to a, a resistance area. And let's, let's, let me show you what we would be looking for here, you know, on the one hour. Bitcoin usually gives us the good short signals on the one hour. Um, like this, guys. Look at how juicy, just how juicy this this short was right here. I mean, I remember this. When was this? July 11th? We, we also had some really, really juicy ones on July 4th. I remember July 4th uh, because in America, for some reason, we celebrate that day uh, to remember the fact that uh, we no longer had to pay taxes to the British. And now instead we have to pay taxes up to 40% if you're a small business owner or more of your taxes to the American government, you know, but at least there's no tea tax anymore. So we celebrate that fact. And a lot of times what we do is we eat GMO corn, Roundup Ready GMO corn and watermelon. And on that day, I remember that we, um, we put in this massive bearish divergence on the one hour time frame, And this, this was a beautiful, beautiful short right here. Boom. This is the kind of thing we would want to see as we are coming up to those higher levels if we come above that point of control. Because um, right now that is acting as a very strong area of resistance. And, you know, if we do come above it, I, I think we can come back up to these higher levels in the range. You know, I, I really do. I'm thinking like around here, we could even be coming up to around here. We could even potentially see us come back uh, around here. You know, um, Around around this area, this area right here is a very, very, very important zone of resistance. Around like 36K, give or take, a very strong area of resistance. So I think it's possible if we come up above the point, this area here, that we, we could see us coming back up to like in the 35s to 36. Um, because, you know, once we get acceptance above that point of control, that now becomes our very strong support. Because it's such a strong resistance, if we flip that, it becomes a very strong support. And the higher time frames, I feel, do give us upward room, right? This this bullish divergence on the daily. You know, not guaranteed to play out, y'all. But, but it very well may. It very well may. Especially since we're coming from the low, the low of the, uh, you know, the low of the, the range down here, right? So let me come back into the chat. Yeah, Tony Bento, you're right. You know, people say this phrase right here, and you are correct. However, the amount of uh, time. And energy and money that most would have to uh, go through in order to um, make the other choice is very intense. And most people don't have the time or the energy or even the financial means to get things in order to do that. And we all know that if you don't do this, then certain people might come and put you in a cage, right? And we don't want to... 
We don't want to be in cages. We don't want that, you know. I shouldn't talk about this, guys. That This is how YouTube channels get shadow banned, you know. The chat baits me into talking about things I should not talk about, you know. Um, Jacob Michael. Jacob Michael. What a, what, a, what a nice name, Jacob Michael. I like that name. That's a good name. Very biblical. Very biblical. How do I feel about the divergences on the momentum waves opposite of the norm, i.e. bullish div on above zero momentum waves and bearish divs on below zero momentum waves? Yeah, those are still those are still uh, valid, bro. It's just, uh, you know, like, let's let's take a look at the one hour here. And, you know, we do see the the bullish divergence happening above the zero line, right? Uh, on the on the hourly, but we would want to go down to lower time frames and confirm that we actually see that right. So on the six minute, if we zoom out here, now we can really see this thing, you know, more more clearly. Where over time, starting from this momentum wave, momentum is coming down. We can we can see it below the zero line. So it's okay if you see it on the higher time frames um, in a place uh, like above the zero line. But then just go down to the lower time frames and confirm, confirm that you are actually seeing it also clearly on the, on those lower time frames. And look at this, guys. Speaking of lower time frames, the six minute is about to get a money flow crossover, uh, which is good for my long, y'all. Which is good for my long. It's good for my long. It's bad for my short. We are also coming up into a weekend, guys, which we know is very unpredictable for the cryptocurrency markets. Why is that? Well, there's low volume. A lot of people, including myself, take the weekend off. I don't trade on Saturdays because it is the Sabbath day, right? The Sabbath day. You know, for in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And so it's a remembrance. It's a remembrance of the Lord's creation and it's also a foreshadow of the time where the Messiah will be reigning on the earth. So I do not trade on that day. I focus on uh, religious things and uh, fellowshipping with brothers and sisters. And so there's low volume in the market that day. And uh, even on Sunday as well. And, you know, people can move the market with, you know, uh, smaller orders because there's less volume coming through. And so, you know, a lot of times we've seen erratic pumps. We've even seen erratic dumps. We've seen crazy things happen on the weekend where you might think to yourself that Elon Musk whipped out his dang cell phone, opened up that Twitter app, and just started talking about Bitcoin. But it's just the weekend, you know? It's just the weekend. Um, shout out to Crypto Crank, Oven Punch. What is the difference between an HVN and a POC? Aren't they the same? They can be the same. A POC is an HVN. But the POC is the H-est VN of all the HVNs. <laughs> Overpunch. If we, uh, if we um, just pull out, a, if we uh, bleh, bleh, pull out a fixed range, just, just do this here, right? You know, we could say this is a high volume node right down here because we see this spike in volume down here. And we also did get a bounce off this high volume node, right? We see there's a spike in volume. We get a bounce right off of it. But this right here, this point of control, this is the highest volume node of all the volume nodes. So that's the difference. It's the highest high volume node. It's the node with the most volume. The Hest of all the VNs, if we want to speak in acronyms. Shout out to Memory Man. Thanks for being here, my brother. Shout out to Crypto Yacht. Yeah. Uh, crypto Universe says God has nothing to do with crypto. I would disagree. I think every, God, God is sovereign over everything. Can you trade inverse perpetual contract on Binance? Yes. Yes, Binance futures, you can do coin margined trading. So you can trade uh, the, the USD pairs and, and earn crypto and stack your crypto on Binance futures. But Adam, if you're located in the United States, uh, then you will need to have a little workaround to trade Binance futures. The way I do that is API through 
three commas. I actually do have a video on my YouTube channel. Let me let me drop that in the in the in the chat here because it's kind of hard to find. Um, nice. It's kind of hard to find. Let's see. <laughs> Man, this is so. Cr <laughs> the videos I have, guys, uh, on my suggested is so funny. It's it, it is so funny. Cradle of Filth, Michael Bolton, EOTech, and uh, this guy trying to do gutturals, and he's covered in tattoos. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting, guys. I, I don't know how. I, I have not listened to Cradle of Filth in many years, and I do not plan to ever listen to them <laughs> anytime soon. Oh, man. Okay. Let's, let's see. Where's that video? Binance Futures. How to trade Binance futures. Here it is. How to trade Binance futures. Let me drop that in the chat here, guys. <laughs> Thanks for being here, memory man. Memory Man, he's an OG. He's an OG. Been around for a while here. And a good musician as well. What is the difference between using the VWAP on the higher time frames and using the crosswap strategy on the lower time frames? Um, nothing really, except sometimes you'll notice it's the same exact VWAP. It's the same exact VWAP, right? Because regardless of the time frame, the VWAP will be the same. But here's the difference. The a lot of times you'll notice that we will bounce or reject off the VWAP and it won't really be anything too significant. You could really get sliced up. Like look at all in here, right? Uh, July 21th, a few days ago, we were just trading sideways along the WAP, right? And so that's why it's so important to line things up with a level of support and resistance that you already drew on the chart because you want to have more confluence. Um, you want to have some more confluence. So like right here, this is a, a good uh, opportunity in my mind to use the crosswap strategy because we have come above a trend line, retested the trend line. Uh, we, we bounced off the VWAP. Then we bounced off our trend line as we're getting the money flow crossover, right? So this is this is one of the a crosswap trade that I would take here. Um, but it's the same thing, right? And this this would have been a nice scalp move for us if we had gotten in on the money flow cross, nice one percent scalp on the six minute time frame. That's the difference. So, you know, you have to make sure if you're doing the cross lap strategy that all the um, confirmations are there. But the VWAP is the exact same. And I would never just long because we bounced off the VWAP. Well, sometimes I would, right? It depends on the situation. But you got to make sure if you're going to do the cross lap strategy that you're using multiple layers of confluence, guys. Multiple layers of confluence. It's a strategy we go over in the course. Check it out. JasonCasperTrading.com. There is a discount. There's currently a 15% discount. If we can get this video up to 400 likes, I will do a 20% discount. But right now, you can get 15% off. By using the coupon code Chicken Drinking Water. Um, Jay Greasy says, "Since I'm religious, do I think crypto is one of the signs? What do you mean, like the sign of what? The signs of the end times? I've got a lot of opinions on it, but they're not appropriate for the for the YouTube machine. Also, uh, cryptogenic dude, this this kind of question I would love to talk about, but again, I don't know." If um, if I have time to wax that biblical right now, unfortunately, sometimes I wax super biblical. The logo on my computer tells a story about Adam and Eve. Yeah, right. Yeah, this it, it, is an interesting right that the uh, that the the Apple logo is the fruit with the bite taken out of it, and you know the first Mac computer ever sold for six hundred and sixty six dollars. pretty sure yeah it was six hundred and sixty six dollars these aren't uh, 
Let's see. Yeah. It was $666.66. Interesting, right? Interesting. Maybe the iPhone is the mark of the beast. Uh, let's see. Are there any alternatives to trading view? There are. I I don't use any. If anybody in the chat does, uh, you can let uh, Andre Eon know. Rob McLaren is starting to get sideways PTSD. It's exhausting at times. You just gotta you just gotta wait for those good setups. You know, like yesterday, there were not very many trades to take. Um. Okay, boom. We just broke out of that WAP. Boom. We just broke out of it. Nice, nice. Getting alerts left and right. Thank you, Crypto Pump It. Thank you, Crypto Pump It. Nice, nice. Stoked. I'm stoked. I'm stoked on the gains, guys. I'm stoked on the gains. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Looks like this hidden bullish divergence is starting to play. And I hope I'm right. I do hope I'm right. Let's go, Bitcoin. Let's go. Uh, so, uh, Andre Orox is an alternative for TradingView. Mike B. Mueller says we're breaking out. Um... My thoughts on Wyckoff, cryptogenic dude. Yeah, I honestly, I have to, I have to cut out of here in ten minutes. You know, maybe if I ever do like a Saturday night stream where we actually open up the Bible sometimes and go a little crazy, then I could talk about that, man. Or in Discord, the Wyckoff, Wyckoff. <coughs> well, I don't know. Maybe you got the. Maybe you got the vid. I don't know. Maybe that's why you're coughing. But I I don't really know. I don't really know much about um, about that, guys. Wyckoff, I'm not a big understander of it. And I will say that people always send me charts and, and stuff and say, you know, look, it lines up perfectly. And I, I don't know. I just don't know. If it's real, I, don't get me wrong. I, I know 100% that there are whales who need to accumulate their position over time. And in order to do that, they need to push the price up and down, right? I understand that, but I think it's just—I think it's just one piece of the puzzle. I think um, a lot of times, unless you're trader reality, which I am definitely not, I feel like a lot of times new traders get a little wrapped around the axle with it, and um, I don't know. It, I don't know. I can't really talk about it because I, I don't understand it very well. But I will say that I don't pay attention to it, and I still have a pretty good, a pretty decent success rate just by doing what I'm doing, which makes me think that, you know, if there are people manipulating the market, they're they're doing it according to technical analysis as well. Uh, like, you know, it's just so interesting, right? Um, every time F2 pool dumped or whatever, if, that, if that's even real, which I'm sure it is, right? The, the the charts were telling us we had to dump anyway. Or every time Elon Musk tweeted, the charts were telling us we have to dump. Uh, you know, I just don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I'm ignorant. I'm ignorant, so I cannot speak of it. So I'll shut my mouth. So Renee Carpenter says, what are you expecting? You said you're in two shorts and a long. Yeah, I'm in two shorts and a long. I don't know what I'm expecting. That's why I'm short and long, right? I'm... They call me they call me Fibmaster Schlong because I'm short and long all the time and I'm doing it because I'm pulling out the fib. And you know, when we look when we zoom out and look at the the volatility <laughs> the volatility here, right? You know, it's like it's not very much price action here. So whatever happens, I am good with that. Right now I am I am agnostic. I shouldn't say agnostic. Right. I, I I'm not without gnosis. But I should say I'm undecided about my market sentiment because um, things are looking bearish and bullish to me at the same time, right? This this money flow on the four hour looks quite bullish, right? I would not be surprised if we 
boom, 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 come through the uh, the point of control. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if we got a retracement down to these lower levels, which is why I have positioned myself in such a way where regardless of what happens, I will be able to profit from it. That's kind of my style. Potential head and shoulders on the one hour. Memory man, yeah, memory man, I can tell you're pretty Gnostic, bro. I can tell. I can tell, man. I can tell. Uh, let's t check out the one hour. Potential head and shoulders. Yeah, it's potential. It's absolutely potential. You know, that is super potential. And then we would break down. We've got our shoulder, our head, and our shoulder. And this would be our neckline, which would give us a target of about let's see where we would come down to if we broke down out of this thing interesting we'd come down kind of to one of the support levels that we would be looking for a retracement if we were going to continue upwards so that's interesting little things like this guys finding little bits of confluence right thank you uh, for bringing that up there in the chat because you know it helps as we're doing our technical analysis EJ legend 01 you are the D01 legend um, <laughs> I, uh, Shamini, I don't quite understand, uh, what you're saying here. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, Tony Bento, short and long at the same time. Yeah, that, that is the way. That's the way to do it, Tony Bento. That's the way I, I, I love to do it. If I can get myself, my goal is always to get myself in a position where I can enter a long, lock in profits, enter a short, lock in profits, and if price is in the middle of my short and long, like right now, price is literally in the middle of my short and long. Right? Both my short and my long are in profit, meaning I, I cannot lose any money right now. But... If price pumps, I will make a lot of money. And if price dumps, I will make a lot of money. And this is the position that you want to try and get yourself in, y'all. Right around here. Right around here. In the middle. Because um, then you can relax, right? Like yesterday, I was in the same position. Yesterday, I was short from here and long from here. And here we are trading out here. I remember I was talking to Steve Nose. Shout out to Steve Nose if you're watching. He's a good trader. And um, I was telling him, hey, you know, I'm right now on the tractor. And I'm not even really watching the charts. And I don't even really care what happens because I've got my limit order set to take profit if we pump or dump. And I've got trades locked in profit. And so it's just a nice relaxing position where you don't have to be stuck at the computer screen with your eyes duct taped open just because you're looking at that one minute because you're only long and you start to see the bearish divergence on the one minute. You start to freak out and you're like, ah, it's just the one minute. It might not come down that far and then it starts dumping. You're like, ah, I don't know. Should I get out or should I stay in? You're like, ah, I don't know. And uh, by the time you're done thinking about that, we dump way more. And you're like, dang it. Now I'm only like 1% in profit now. And if I close, if I market order out, I'm going to take a loss. And it's like, you know what? You don't have to worry about that stuff. Tony Bento, you don't have to worry about it. Um, what's going on in here? Is Crypto Face in here? Crypto Face, are you in here? Um, shout out to Crypto Yacht. You know we, you know, Crypto uh, Crypto Yacht has a flat Earth map in here. You know that's that's cool. You know, flat Earthers, globe Earthers, square Earthers. It's all good in the hood. Trading is a mind bender. Says Memory Man. Yeah, it can be. You know, it totally can be. Totally can be.
I hope we pump, guys. I Honestly, I hope we pump today. I hope we pump. I hope we do. That would be nice. That would be nice. Like I said, I have... I have my... You know... This right here... This is, this is what I'm hoping for. But here's the thing, guys. Because I don't trade on Saturday... You know, I might I might miss out on some gains. But if if we pump today and we get that that there's some levels that I would love to short and it would be so juicy. So juicy. Like like that watermelon, the watermelon that your wife cut open fresh from the fridge or if you're out somewhere, and it has, like I said, it has to be your own watermelon that you grew from your own chicken manure, okay? People don't know this about chickens, but they are awesome to have because you feed them all your food scraps, they eat all the bugs and the ticks in your yard, and then what happens is they poop all that stuff out, all those nutrients, right? All the nutrients go in the poo, and the poo goes in the straw. And the straw stays in the floor of the chicken coop all year, and it decomposes, and all the micro biome come in there right and then the next year you put that stuff in your garden you plant a watermelon seed in there and you get this nice juicy chicken poo filled watermelon put that thing in a cooler go out for a picnic lunch all right when you cut that thing open take a bite it's so dang juicy so dang juicy and i would love to take some of those juicy shorts guys i would love to take them i would love to Let's see. Shout out to CryptoFace. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, picnic lunch. Remember picnics, guys? Do you remember picnics? Or is that even a thing anymore? Do people even go on picnics now? I don't I don't know. Like a picnic basket, is that still even a thing? I think that went away in the 90s. Let's check it out. How do you even spell picnic? Picnic basket. Well, let's see if let's see what kind of picnic. Wow, oh, this is pretty nice. This is pretty nice. I might get me some of these. Ah, I could get one at Walmart Supercenter. Nice. Okay. Well, I hope I didn't just give away my location there. But uh, let's go to images <laughs> and uh, let's take a look. Oh, these are some nice things, guys. Yeah, I might uh, I might have to pick myself up one of these and one of the uh, one of the fancy red checkered handkerchiefs too. You know, pick me up a loaf of Wonder Bread too at Walmart. Interesting memory, man. Picnics are a Tartaria tradition. Is that true? The best watermelon you can ever eat comes from another man's field on a hot night. Is that true, the Honorable Mikey? That doesn't sound very honorable, bro. That doesn't sound very honorable, but I'll tell you about my watermelon patch, guys. I'll tell you about my watermelon patch. Okay, so we're coming back down. Like, let's see what happens if we... If, are we gonna... What happens at the VWAP, right? The VWAP, this is going to be, I think, you know, a potential, a potential make it or break it area here. A potential make it or break it area. I think we can come up more, guys, simply because of, you know, we've got uh, we've got the hit we've got the hidden bullish div right here. We've got the hidden bullish div, and we came down to a support. Came down to a support with a hidden bullish div. You know, yeah, that's why I, you know, we came up above the VWAP. You know, the VWAP really, that's right where I took my, my profit out, some of my profit, 50% of my profit. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to play games here, guys. It's a Friday, so, you know, let's see if this purple, can this purple candle turn blue? Come on, purple candle. Come on. 
Come on. Oh, no, no, you're going the wrong way. It looks like a nail right now. Yeah, it sounds like Honorable Mikey has some dishonorable tendencies. Yeah, so my watermelon patch, I have it set up with trellises, okay? I have my watermelon patch set up with trellises, and it kind of looks like this, okay? I have, um, believe it or not, I have these trellises set up, okay? And the fence that I use on the trellises is I have orange and I have green, okay? Orange and green, and I've named them, actually. I've named them the 0.65 trellis and the 0.618 trellis and I have many of them too I have more than just one right so I've got I've got a few trellises in my watermelon patch and uh, it's it's pretty cool how juicy those watermelons are if you just plant them within the golden pocket if you just plant those watermelons within the golden pocket they are so dang juicy I'm telling you guys I'm telling you guys they're so juicy but hey you know what Unfortunately, I do have to stop streaming because I have I have responsibilities, right? That happens when you're 30. So I have to go, but I do pray that all of you are blessed and that all of you have a good weekend. And so receive this blessing in the Hebrew language. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmorecha Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'chunecha Yisa Adonai panav elecha Vyasemlecha shalom, Bashem Yeshua Hamashiach, Elohe Israel, which means in English, may the Lord bless you, and may he protect you and guard you. May he cause his face to shine light upon you, and may he have grace upon you, and may he lift up his countenance upon you and give you wholeness and completeness in the name of Jesus, the Messiah, the God of Israel. Yeah, guys, Lord willing, I will see y'all either Saturday night or Sunday morning or one of these days. I don't even know. I don't know. But uh yeah, peace everybody. Peace, peace.